Lopobia Elaine is one of the fan favorite characters of Tower of God ever since we met her back in the name hunt station as Kaiser. Dude, it's crazy. Like, Kaiser was such an intimidating and cool villain, and the fact that we found out this crazy backstory for this character, the fact that they'd forgotten their own name, and this history with the Lopobia family, to eventually becoming Bomb's ally, it's a great story. And yet, sometimes I wonder, why is Elaine in particular so popular? Like, what makes Elaine so different from other people who became allies who were once villains, for example? There's a, that's a big trope in Tower of God. So I want to examine Elaine's character, talk about the various aspects of her character, and explain why I think she is so popular. If you like Tower of God, consider subscribing to the channel because we make a lot of it here, as well as God of High School, Webtoon, blah, 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 you know the drill. All right, I'll get an obvious thing out of the way. Like, yes, Elaine is very pretty. Yes, she's very beautiful. Uh, she's many people's best girl. She's very popular because of her beauty. And even in the story, they mention how beautiful she is, you know, when she takes off the mask. And this is also, I mean, we know that when choosing a princess of Jihad, like, unfortunately, beauty does go into the selection process. Like, they're not going to choose an ugly princess, right? Sadly. The beauty factors a lot into it as well. And so I do think that it is, that is another reason why she's so popular. Even in the story, that's another reason why she is. Because she was going to be a princess, and then the whole thing happened when she was tested, blah, blah, blah. Why am I saying blah, blah, blah a lot today? What's going on, Joe? It's what I say when I run out of words. You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. But that can't be the only reason, because there are plenty of other characters, boys, girls, whoever, that are beautiful, handsome, whatever, and some of them aren't as popular. So Elaine is popular for more than just her beauty. She's popular for a lot of reasons. I think the main thing is, like I mentioned before, there's this trope in Tower of God of, you know, you're fighting the bad guy and eventually they become like the good guy. And it doesn't happen with every villain, but there are a few who have eventually sort of turned over to the good side or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's obviously Elaine, but there's also White. And White is a weird one because White he also does the trope really well because he becomes an ally, but he's not really an ally. Like, he never once is doing it just to be good, right? It's not like he turned over a new leaf. It's always in his best interest. He's always doing it for some underhanded reason, and, and you know, there's always something going on there. Um, but with Karaka, for example, Karaka's someone who, he did kind of have a change of heart. At first, he didn't like Bomb. He thought that he was the one that should have the thorn. He didn't think that this new kid should come in here and, uh, you know, do all these things. I almost said blah 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 again! But it's still the trope, right? Karaka kind of turning over a new leaf, and he's popular too, but I feel like with Elaine, She's somebody who was such a good villain, you know, like her identity was so shrouded in mystery. She was built up as this big bad of the name hunt station, but she was also someone who wasn't like impossible to defeat. Whenever they hyped up Joaquin, it was like, this guy, you cannot beat this guy, right? Whenever they hyped up whoever, you know, Hell Joe, you can't beat this guy. It was always, the big bad was always somebody so powerful, it was unthinkable to beat them. But with Elaine or Kaiser, it was like, no, this is a D-rank regular who is really, really strong. So Bomb, you're gonna have to watch out, but you can do this, you know? And so the battle between Bomb and Elaine, it didn't feel cheated. We didn't feel cheated watching the fight. There wasn't some power-up that Bomb got at the last minute. There wasn't anything, anyone that intervened, like, with Hell Joe, right? It was like, no, there was just a battle that lasted a few chapters. They both were using their brains, both using their abilities, and Bomb won fair and square. And throughout the battle and in the aftermath of the battle, we see the change in Elaine's character. Obviously, afterward in her future appearances, we see that even more so. That's why I feel like the trope was done especially well. You know, it wasn't just like some sudden change. It was like we saw this realistic battle. We saw it all play out, you know, and then we, we saw her character from start to finish this growth. And I think that's that's one of the main reasons I think she's so popular too. Like we see her character as a real character because of all that. She also is just a fun character, right? Like she has all of these diverse abilities that we get to see in the Name Hunt Station. She doesn't have just like one trick up her sleeve, you know? With Joaquin or White, Joaquin's awesome, right? But he has the soul thing and he has like the sword thing. That's kind of, you know, he's, he uses his swords and he, his sword and he uses souls. Like, okay, it's really cool, right? But it's like one or two main things with someone else, I don't know, uh, Hell Joe, it's the Red Thrissa, right? Like, the Red Thrissa is his thing. That's kind of it. With Reflejo, the shadow that he was gifted was his thing. That's kind of it. I'm not saying any of these are, like, bad at all, but I'm saying the cool thing about Elaine is that not only does she have Fenril, 
but she can also teleport with Fenril. She also has the armor that she obtained um, previously, this high-grade armor. She also has these crazy, like, daggers that she can whip around on strings that are also invisible, you know? Like, and then there's other things, too. Like, there's so much that she uh, uses to, to win her fights and with her battle with Bomb, you know? And, like, later on, we get to see her. I want to see that side of Elaine more because she's known for having a ton of different items, a ton of different ways of fighting, which are all super awesome. And it also just has a lot of potential for her character, you know? Like, we know that she's a core ally of Bomb's team now in Season 3, and I want to see her develop more. And I think we will. I'm hoping we will. I'm, 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 maybe I'm hoping too much, but I really, I really think SIU will give her some time to shine eventually because she was a really important character, you know, and now that she's a member of Bomb's team, I think she's going to have more opportunities. But with all these diverse abilities and with such an interesting, like, character and background, she has so much potential of, of storytelling, of, of fights, of developing her powers, of meeting someone from her past. I don't know. There's so much potential with Elaine. There's also the connection to Jin Sung, which is really cool. Like, Jin Sung is the one that did Bomb a favor. He purchased Elaine, and eventually he sent Elaine to help Bomb during the last station, you know? And now they're rescuing Jin Sung. Like, maybe Elaine and Jin Sung will have a conversation if they actually are able to rescue Jin Sung, which at this point, I don't know, we'll have to see. Not to mention her relationship with Bomb. I mean, obviously, Bomb is the one who got her out of that mess. He's the one that reminds reminded her about who she is, you know? And we haven't really seen them interact since then, which is kind of sad, even though she's a part of the team. Like, I want to see how do they treat each other, you know? Are they, like, cool now, or is it a little awkward? Like, are they are they gonna be close? Like, I don't think they're gonna be close, but I just want to see if their relationship can kind of progress, you know? I know some people ship them, I don't really see it, um, but I just want to see their friendship grow, you know? I think that'd be cool. She also just fits into the story really well because Elaine is a regular who has powers and abilities that sort of surpass the realm of regular into the world of Ranker, right? Like her wolf Fenril is known to be able to pierce the flesh of Rankers and the wolf can poison you, right? And you can like die out. So Elaine has the potential to, if she's working with other regulars, maybe like Coon and Hockney, right? Then perhaps she can actually do a surprise attack and kill a ranker, like maybe a weak ranker, like Nanatona or something. I don't know. Although I do think Nanatona will probably fight uh, Mule Love. But re regardless of what happens, like I think there's potential there of Elaine being able to not be an anywhere near Bomb's level, but maybe support him because she actually has a way to fight rankers in her own way. I just said wait twice in a row. So we'll see. I mean, obviously there is also a trope, not in Tower of God, but in any like fantasy story, video game, or even, you know, stories like this, where if the villain like joins your side, they're kind of nerfed. Like I remember playing Final Fantasy IV and like, uh, Golbez, right? He's the main villain, but you find out he's not the main villain. Spoilers from a game that's like freaking over 20 years old. But then when he like temporarily joins your team, he's like nowhere near as powerful. Like that's sort of how I feel like sometimes with Elaine is are we really gonna see her at her maximum, you know? Because when she was fighting Bomb, she felt really broken, you know? Are we gonna see that broken Elaine, but on our side? Or is she always gonna be sort of overpowered by somebody else? We'll have to wait and see, um, but I don't know. I feel like it's worth mentioning. Like, overall, Elaine as a character has so much potential to be so much more, but even if she doesn't grow that much, she already went through her character arc, and I just want to see her, man. I want to see her cut loose a little bit. I want to see her talking to other characters more, seeing her relationships with other characters, you know? Um, this video, by the way, was totally inspired by yesterday's chapter. I mean, just seeing Elaine, man, like, it's crazy. Like, as somebody who started reading around the Name Hunt Station time or Floor of Death, I never imagined that she would actually return as like a core ally, you know? It was something that we'd all talked about and dreamed of, but we always knew it's probably not gonna happen, at least for a while. But seeing her in these chapters, it's like a dream come true. It's awesome. I don't know, I'm sure there's other reasons why she's so popular, but like these are the main things. She stands out from the other villains or antagonists who join the good side because of all the reasons I mentioned. Like she really does feel so unique and seeing her with the squad now makes that uniqueness feel even more awesome. And I don't know, it's just so cool. But regardless, let me know why you think Elaine is so popular because I'm sure I missed a couple of things. So I'm curious what you think. And what do you think Elaine is going to do in the future? Like what role will she play as a member of Bomb's team? Do you think she's gonna be helpful maybe in the nest or is she gonna show up more later on? I'm curious what you think. So let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe as always. And also patrons, you guys are amazing as 
usual. Fladan, Saeed, Masood, and TechCrazy80. You guys are the sponsors of the channel. Thank you so much. High Rankers, Adam, Justin Carr, Nicholas Victorson, The Cheese, Vera Lane, Wesley Davis. You guys are also just as awesome. And of course, the rest of you patrons. You guys allow me to make content, so thank you. And thank you for your video suggestions as well. I'm going to be making a lot of those this coming week. We also have a Discord server where you can hang out, play games sometimes. I want to stream Final Fantasy XIV there in the near future. So come join the Discord. The link is also down below. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God video. Take care.